On this video, we're talking about tips for lighting horror films, and that starts right now. Hey guys, Ryan here. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that my favorite time of year is the Halloween season. So to help celebrate the spooky season, I thought that today we would dive into ways that we can improve the lighting in our horror films. But before we get started, if this is your first time here, this channel is all about learning and growing as a filmmaker. So please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's become better filmmakers together. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please check out our digital store where you can find awesome filmmaking resources like our Horror Lutz Pack. The link is in the video description. These lighting tips can apply to all sorts of genres of film, but today we're specifically focusing on lighting horror films. So without any further ado, let's get started. Tip number one, low key lighting. Low key lighting is a style of lighting that emphasizes shadows, which is appropriate for many scenes in horror. For this style of lighting, we will use hard lighting. Our goal is to increase the contrast of the subject and the environment that they inhabit. For this method, we will ditch traditional three-point lighting on our subject and use just one single key light. This will help to create shadows on our subject's face. This can help you mold the shadows on your subject more to your liking. While low-key lighting is used in all sorts of dramatic films, it is often a go-to look for many horror films. So this is a useful technique to learn for all sorts of narrative film work. Tip number two, backlighting. Backlighting is one of the most important aspects of lighting horror in my opinion. Backlighting isn't just used in horror filmmaking, so this step is useful for all sorts of lighting situations. But it can make a world of difference when trying to create a scary mood. Backlighting is great for creating silhouettes in your images and can help you show the audience the darkness that inhabits your scene. Add in a little fog and you have yourself a very moody image perfect for horror filmmaking. Much like the name implies, backlighting is achieved by lighting our subject from the back. We will face our light source towards the viewer and have our subject in between the light source and our camera, which will create moody shadows and silhouettes. Tip number three, background lighting. Lighting the backgrounds of our images is important for all types of filmmaking, but can be especially important when trying to create a dark or moody image. If we are lighting our subjects with low-key lighting like we mentioned earlier, and our background is completely black, it will make our images appear more like a stage show than a film. It's usually best to have at least a touch of light on the background behind our subject to add depth and mood to our images. We can also light only the background and place our subject in between our lit background and the camera. If we forego lighting on our subject in this case, we create a variation of the backlighting setup that we mentioned earlier, creating a silhouette of our subject between the viewer and the background. Tip number four, natural daylight. I have found that when creating horror films and creating a daytime scene, I usually get the best results when using natural lighting from windows as my main source of light or just using the natural sunlight when outdoors and using reflectors or diffusion when necessary. For indoor scenes, using the available light that you have and adding visual interest using practical lights in your background can help make all the difference when creating moody images. This tip is mainly just my personal preference. I prefer my horror to have daytime images that appear to be underexposed. I just feel that it helps maintain the mood and tension even when the sun is shining. Tip number five, uplighting. Now this next technique should only be used when it has a practical reason for being in your story, but uplighting your subject or the flashlight look can be a cool way to create an unnatural look on your subject's face. This can be achieved by using campfire light, flashlights, candles, or reflectors. Just make sure it has a reason for existing in your story. Tip number six, oversaturated lighting. This next step is also a technique that is usually used very sparingly. Saturating your image completely with one color of light like red or blue can be an effective way to create tension, a feeling of danger, or an intense mood. This can be achieved by using red or blue gels on your lights, or it can be achieved in post using LUTs on your images. 
Tip number seven, window lighting. Whether you're creating a daytime scene or a nighttime scene, placing lighting outside of your scene pointed in through windows can be a great way to light your scene. These lights can be controlled using gels to create a look of moonlight, or they can just create a more controllable daylight look for your scene. Tip number eight, underexposing your images. This tip is pretty self-explanatory and pretty simple to explain. While filming, just be sure to underexpose your image more than you think you need to, creating a darker image. Just be sure to not underexpose your image so much that you're losing quality in the image and you should be okay. And my final technique for horror lighting is spotlighting. This is another tip that should be used in specific circumstances and only when it makes sense in your story. Unless, of course, you're going for something a little more abstract. Using spotlights and scenes, mainly by way of a flashlight, is a great way to create scares and tension in your scenes. It can be really terrifying when we see a character's point of view as they search around an environment using a flashlight. And the way a flashlight beam affects a character's face can be really distorting and really freaky if done correctly. And there you have it guys, just a small taste of things that we can all do to help improve the lighting in our horror films. Question of the day, do you have any additional tips for lighting horror that you feel like I forgot or left out? Please let us know in the comments below. A big special thanks to our monthly channel members. If you would like to find out how you can become a channel member and help support this channel, please click the join button located on the channel header above. You can help signal boost this video and help more people see it by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends on social media. And if you do, you have my sincere thanks. Thank you so much for coming along on this filmmaking journey with me. I am Ryan, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Horror, fi horror films. Horror films. Horror. Horror. Lighting our horror films.